Today, we're thrilled to announce the release of Youthin Pro 4, and it's huge! It brings dynamic content to the next level with game-changing features like parent sources, dynamic multiplication, and nested multiple item sources. It also comes with a big accessibility update to make your site's WCAG compliant, significant productivity update to speed up your workflow, and tons of refinements for the page builder. Are you in? Let's go! The next three features build upon each other and together bring dynamic content to a whole new level. Let's start with the first one, parent sources. Now you can set a content source on a section, row or column and use it as a parent source by the elements within. So for example, if multiple elements load content from the same source, you only need to select the source once and not for each element separately. This saves time and decreases the number of database queries, which improves the overall page speed. Now, rows also have the dynamic content option, so they can be used as a parent source just like sections and columns. And to indicate a parent source is selected, we have a new dynamic content P status icon. The second feature is dynamic multiplication. As you all know, multiple item elements, like the grid element, render as many items as available in the content source. Now you can do the same with sections, rows, columns, and elements. Why would you do that? Well, multiple item elements do have a large variety of options, but sometimes that's just not enough. So now you can multiply a section, row, or column and design a repeated layout part with the page builder. For example, set a multiple item source on a row and use it as a parent source in the elements within. The row will multiply as many times as available in the content source. Think about it, this opens up so many possibilities. For example, you're no longer limited to the number of content fields available in the grid element. This is great! To indicate that a multiple item source is used and a section, row, column or element is multiplied, we highlighted green and add a new dynamic content and status icon, which stands for a natural number. We have some math lovers here. There are just a few things to keep in mind. If you multiply sections, make sure to remove the top or bottom padding to prevent double padding. If you multiply a single column, use the whole layout and just set the width for the multiplied column. There is also a new alignment option for columns. By default, they expand to fill the row, but you can also keep the width and align them to the left or center. And we have new conditions to show or hide elements depending on the index of the multiple item source. This is very useful if a divider is part of your repeated layout, so you can hide it for the last item. You probably know where this is going, right? These two features lift a long-standing limitation of dynamic content, rendering nested multiple item sources. For example, if you want to render a list of categories with their latest posts. Now this is possible when a multiple item source is used as a parent source. This is because if a section, row or column renders the multiple item source, the element can render the related multiple item source. Since it's a multiple item source from a parent source, the element will show a P and status icon. Nested multiple item sources are a real game changer. Thanks to this feature, we were able to boil down the categories layouts in some themes to just one repeating row. And now let's add the sub layout element into the mix. The sub layout element now has general and advanced settings. This means you can set the position for the whole element, add a parallax animation, give it a name, and here it comes, select a dynamic content source. It can then be used as a parent source within the sub layout. This means you can multiply a group of rows by only setting a multiple item source on the sub layout element. This is awesome, right? To get the most out of parent sources and dynamic multiplication, we have some additions to complement the content sources. Let's go through them one by one. First, we extended custom taxonomy sources, like category and tag sources, so you can now load their articles as a related multiple item source. 
Second, we added all page sources as a single item sources. This has two advantages. You can access their related multiple item sources like article tags and use them instead of multiple item sources to show a single item. This way you won't have a highlighted green element in the layout with the end status icon when it's not multiplied. Finally, we added a single custom menu item source with its related child menu items. So for example, now you can get sibling menu items. That's it. We're really thrilled about this update. Parent sources speed up the workflow and database queries. Dynamic multiplication gives you tons of new possibilities to create layouts. And rendering nested multiple item sources will significantly streamline your dynamic layouts. And guess what? We've reworked all dynamic content layouts in our theme packages to make use of the latest features. That's all for dynamic content. Next is the accessibility update. One of the takeaways from the Joomla day last year was how important accessibility is among the Joomla community. That's why Utheme Pro 4 comes with a huge accessibility update. It makes use of all accessibility improvements that we introduced in UIKit 3.16. Our interactive JavaScript components, for example, slideshow and dropdown, are accessible for keyboard users. We've implemented the common keyboard navigation conventions in which the tab and shift tab keys move focus from one component to another, while other keys, like arrow keys, move focus inside of components that include multiple focusable elements. We also set relevant WI, ARIA roles, states and properties to make sure the JavaScript components are readable and operable using assistive technologies like screen readers. Additionally, Utheme Pro automatically adds ARIA labels when necessary, for example, for form controls, search, logo link and breadcrumbs. Also, links in Utheme Pro have an additional ARIA label option. To avoid navigating a long list of links in the header navigation, Utheme Pro adds a skip to main content link. It's hidden by default and becomes visible in focus by pressing the tab key. But that's not all. Utheme Pro now uses the header and footer elements to define the sidewide header and footer sections and the main element to identify the main content of any page. And you can now select different content sectioning elements in the page builder to organize the layout into logical pieces. Containers like section, row, column and the sublayout element can now use the address, article, aside, footer, header, age group, nav or section element. The nav, text, panel and overlay elements and items of multiple item elements have an HTML element option as well. This allows you to mark up the content of your website semantically in a way that is meaningful to assistive technologies. And to indicate which HTML element is selected, we have new HTML element status icons. We are really excited that you can now create websites with Utheme Pro which comply with WCAG 2.1 standards. Of course, accessibility will still depend on your color contrasts and custom markup. Just check our new accessibility documentation for further details. Alright, that's accessibility for Utheme Pro. Next is our productivity update. Based on the feedback from the Joomla day, we have added a couple of power user features to boost your productivity when working with Utheme Pro. You can now open Utheme Pro directly from the menu in the WordPress and Joomla administration panels. So no matter where you are in Joomla or WordPress, Utheme Pro is just a click away. The next one is a real time saver. If you have a large page layout, finding an element may be quite tedious. There is a new scroll into view icon right next to the edit icon in the sidebar that will automatically scroll the required element into view in the preview on the right and highlight it with a blue border. The same happens if you click the icon in the preview. Here the page builder sidebar will scroll into view. It almost feels like magic. Have you ever wished to edit custom fields of an article while working in the page builder? Now you can. Just hover the layout title and click the edit icon. 
This will open the Edit Article view from Joomla, where you can change the article title and all its custom fields. Next, we have something many of you have been waiting for. You can now transform an element into a different builder element. This is great in so many ways. Obviously, if your element has static content, you can just switch to a different element without having to copy all your content. But even if you're using dynamic content, you save so much time because the dynamic content sources and all the relevant element settings are kept. What's really cool is that you can even transform your element into an element preset. Here, only the settings will be adopted. This way, you can click your way through the Pro Preset library and see how your content looks with different element presets. I can do this all day. This is a small thing, but if you're working with a parallax animation, you will love it. We moved the parallax option to the top of the animation options and grouped all the other individual animations. No more scrolling for you and me. That's our productivity update. Next are page builder refinements. Youthing Pro 4 comes with a new focal point option for images across all elements. As you know, Youthing Pro resizes and crops images automatically. However, before when cropped, the images were always centered, which was especially tricky for images that display persons. After all, you don't want to cut somebody's head off. Now you can set a focal point and choose the direction how the images are cropped. There's also a new blur property in the parallax settings, so you can now follow the trend and blur out the elements on scrolling. Hey, I said elements! Since grid elements can have up to six columns, we also added six column layouts for rows. There are three presets, but of course you can define the column widths individually as usual. This may be just the thing for your next photo layout. We have even more improvements across different elements. Let's go through them one by one. You can now manually order the filter navigation in grid and gallery elements. The panel, grid, panel slider and switcher elements can now expand the title width to push a short content to the right if they are aligned side by side. We added field mapping for the ID option across all elements. The countdown element has the dynamic content option, so you can now map the date dynamically. And the social element has an inline SVG option to style the icons with CSS. Remember the new transition border we introduced with the Dennis Miller theme for the panel, grid, overlay and gallery elements? Well, now it has a direction mode option. The border can animate inside or outside of an image or a video. We also updated all styles and added a nice transition border for each. So just update Youthin Pro and start using it for your images or videos. For one of our upcoming theme packages, we want to have a page with articles filtered by category and tag. In Joomla, you can simply add a menu item for the category block page and select text there to filter the articles. And in WordPress, you have to set a URL parameter to filter the category archive page by additional tags. To create a dedicated template for these pages, we changed the filter for the template assignment of the category block page. Before, you could limit the template to tags of the category, which doesn't make much sense. Now the tags are actually article tags so you can create a specific template for a category block page with articles which are additionally filtered by a tag. We also updated the social icon settings in the header and mobile header layouts. We replaced the links with content items, just like you know from the social element. This means you're no longer limited to five links. 
and you can select a specific icon or an image for each link. There is an optional SVG FAV icon which will be used instead of the PNG image by modern browsers. What's nice about it is that you can use CSS to toggle the SVG color scheme for light or dark mode. And in WordPress the FAV icon will be used in the admin area as well. As you know, Uthim Pro is a real pro when it comes to serving images. It resizes them on the fly, auto-generates up to 6 sizes and even in different next-gen formats. Now you can also define the image quality in percent for all the different formats. We recommend to keep the default values, unless for example you are a photographer and need higher image quality, but keep in mind that this will have a negative impact on page loading times. Remember WordPress popular posts? We use this plugin as an equivalent to Joomla hits to sort posts by popularity. Until now you had to use a separate custom source. This was quite limiting because it also meant that related sources could not be ordered by popularity. Now you can order posts by popularity in the order and direction options just like you would expect. On Joomla Day last year, we noticed that the German translation of Uthim Pro was not ideal. So we took some time and completely revised the German version. But we still need your help with the other languages. So if you want to contribute to existing translations, please sign up to the OneSky app. We truly appreciate it. Uthim Pro 4 comes with some further smaller improvements and fixes. For example, disabled elements are no longer shown in the customizer preview. So no more confusion, is it there, is it not there? Smooth scrolling works with absolute URLs as well. The page locale and URL fields are available for mapping in the site source. And the ID field in general for any source. You can exclude featured articles from custom sources in Joomla. And in WordPress you can set the size for the user avatar field. Oh, and we now support YouTube Shorts URLs in the video element. And the leaflet library as well as Google Maps marker cluster scripts are now loaded locally and not from a CDN. The less requests to a third-party service, the better for GDPR. And last but not least, we raised the required PHP version from 7.2 to 7.4 and updated the GraphQL library to 15.2. For the full list of features and fixes, check out the changelog. Youth Improve 4 itself does not have any breaking changes for end users. However, we refactored parts of the framework as a preparation for upcoming features. This could break backward compatibility for third-party extensions. But we're very thankful that our developer community is so active and already updated their, their extensions during the beta phase. Kudos to you guys! So make sure to update all your Youth Pro third-party extensions to the latest version first and only then update Youth Pro itself. What an update, right? Parent sources, dynamic multiplication and nested multiple item sources unlock so many new possibilities for your layouts. And together with the accessibility and productivity updates, as well as all the other page builder refinements, we think Youth Pro 4 will make a difference in so many ways. Next, we plan to switch back from yearly major releases to a shorter release cycle. We already have a couple of theme packages in the works, which will be bundled with smaller Youth Pro feature releases. And now go ahead and take Youth Pro 4 for a spin yourself. As always, we're looking forward to your feedback, so let us know what you think in the comments below.